Today on Engine Power, what's better than a new Boss 302? A Boss 302 with a do-it-yourself twin turbo system. You won't believe what it gets on the dyno. Today, Engine Power is all about the Blue Oval. The Mustang has come a long way in the last 10 years, and today we're going to show you how this Boss 302 responds to twin turbos. It's a complete twin setup from Hellion Power Systems that was designed to be used on the street or the strip. Now it was developed by a face you may recognize, John Urist. Now if you don't know who he is, you're about to find out. Because we're taking you to Bowling Green, Kentucky, where this guy's competing in the NMRA World Finals. <laughs> We're back taking you to the World Finals of Mustang Race Competition. The NMRA always ends its season here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And there's always plenty of pony power on display and on the quarter mile drag strip. Racers in all eight classes showed up for this double points year end bash. Mustang racers are a special kind of breed. Some people will say their blood even runs Ford Blue. And when you got the NMRA's two fastest racers competing for a world championship, you're in for the ultimate showdown. The technology is just amazing these days with the, uh, the MSD controllers and the equipment that's available. So everybody has that. And uh, it really makes uh, tight racing. And it's, you know, it's the, the fastest street cars in the world. John Uris from Albuquerque has won an unparalleled seven titles in the street outlaw class. This guy wants to change all that. Phil Hines leads the points race this year, going into this weekend season finale. It's been a very, very blessed year. Um, sometimes I wake up in the morning, have to pinch myself to see if it's all real. I am a former world champion. I've, I won the NMCA back in the day, but to come into an NMRA event and win a championship like John Urst has seven times, that's huge, that's huge. Phil's Mustang power comes out of a 423 inch BES engine boosted by an F1 Pro Charger. Uris runs a precision turbocharged 351 Windsor stroke to 421 inches. He credits his crew for his multi-championship success and one vital crew member, his wife Melissa. You know, sometimes when you bring a girlfriend, she wants a lot of attention. You know, she doesn't really understand that they're going to be here all night yeah. working on the car. You don't have time to go out. You're not going to look pretty in the morning. You know, you don't have time for all that. We're here to race. <laughs> so you're lower maintenance in the car. Yes. I do. The Eurus team arrived Friday, and despite the first of many weekend rain delays, John squeezed in an evening test pass of 739. Next day, after an all-night thrash, the Heinz team arrived from Ohio to prep for their first qualifying run. Bobby, my girlfriend, she helps out. Jason, my crew chief, he helps out. And his lovely wife, the same thing. I mean, we're all just kind of the team. I mean, we know exactly what to do at the end of the race. I mean, you see us come back from each run, we all know what to do. We don't have to sit here and tell anybody what to do. It just, we work together as a team. It's taken a lot of hard work, a lot of lost sleep, but I mean, it's worth it. We, he's did a good job. He deserves it. Here we go, first round of Street Outlaw qualifying. And check this, the two rivals will run together. Overpowered, Hines has his wheels in the air before lifting. Meanwhile, Uris runs a 7.33. That was a decent run. Uh, I'm not sure where everybody else fit in, but for the heat and the first run, I think we can't complain about that. And uh, now I just watch the weather, watch the track, and see if we can build upon it. You know? Now I know I got something to tune with. Yeah, I went out there and did a big wheel stand, and heck, I think I rode it almost 300 feet, but I'm just happy that the motor's okay, and we're okay, and that we get to race another round. Up next, our Mustang Turbo install, and later, the Super Street Outlaw Mustang Finals. From the drag strip to the streets, John Uris knows turbos and how to make big power with them. Now, we're no stranger to his genius. He's helped us with projects in the past, like a late model Dodge Challenger. We mounted a set of twin turbochargers underneath for a potent street machine. Now his single turbo system was used on a 382 cubic inch Ford to make over 1100 horsepower and 1,040 foot pounds of torque. This time it's a 2013 Boss 302 Mustang with the impressive Coyote engine. Already pretty potent from the factory, but strong enough for more. 
we wanted to build a high efficiency twin kit to go along with this great Coyote engine that Ford put in. And we designed everything with the best of the best from the headers all the way to the turbochargers. We're seeing with only five pounds of boost between 550 and 600 at the tires. But can be turned up with built engine and mods, can we go all the way to 25 or 30 PSI and over 1200 horsepower, all with the same kit. So you never have to buy any other components or change anything else later on except for the engine strength. My turn signals unplugged. Our John and Hellion's Hoyt are going to start the teardown of the Boss 302. It includes removing the front fascia, strut tower brace, air inlet tube and air box, battery box, and the factory exhaust. Now the windshield washer tank gets removed and discarded. To protect the AC lines and electrical harnesses from the additional heat the exhaust side of the turbos create, we're wrapping them in heat resistant loom to avoid any damage. The power distribution box needs to be relocated to make room for the passenger side turbo. From underneath, the factory headers can be removed, and Hellions can go right in their place. This kit can accept the factory catalytic converter pipe for an emissions-friendly setup, or an off-road exhaust can be installed. And we got ours with black ceramic coating upgrade to complement the engine bay. Since the car is still up in the air, we can tap into the oil pan. This is how the oil returns to the engine after supplying the turbos. Now, before the turbos go on, here's how they work. Exhaust flow from the headers drives the blades of a turbine wheel before it discharges. On the other side, an impeller wheel draws in and compresses high volumes of fresh air. These wheels ride on a close tolerant shaft that can spin over 100,000 RPM. Since the turbo is driven off of exhaust gases, the power increase is considered free since none of the engine's power is used. Precision 62 millimeter ball bearing turbos are used in this system. They're a small version of a ProMod turbo and have the optional stainless steel turbine housing. A big advantage these turbos have over the competitions is this V-band inlet. Now this thing maximizes airflow with the straight shot and it also eases installation. The pair can produce up to 30 pounds of boost on an engine like this Coyote. Now the downpipes can go into place, followed by one between it and the turbos. These direct the exhaust gas from the turbo to the exhaust system. These turbo smart wastegates are going into place. Now they regulate the maximum boost pressure in the turbo system. There's one per turbo and the location offers easy access. Before running any of the cold side piping, we need to go up front and install the air to air intercooler. It attaches to hex standoffs supplied with the system. It's a high flow bar and plate setup and is capable of handling over 1200 horsepower. Using supplied couplers, we can connect the charge side piping together. These feed the compressed air from the turbos through the intercooler and into the engine. Turbo Smart's blow off valves protect the engine and the turbo by eliminating compressor surge. When the throttle closes, the valve opens, letting the compressed air vent to the atmosphere. Now we can attach the oil drain back lines from the turbos to the oil pan. The factory injector is rated at 32.8 pounds an hour, which will support roughly 500 horsepower. Now the new Deechworks injectors are 95 pounds an hour and will support in upwards of 1300. A Magnaflow 3-inch exhaust system is going to let this twin turbo Hellion breathe, and a true X crossover pipe will connect the turbo downpipe. Behind it, a complete catback system. The mid pipes connect to 5x5x14 five by five by round mufflers that will give this boss that famous Magnaflow sound. Out back, a set of four inch polished tips will round out the system. Also out back, but in the trunk, is this JMS plug and play PowerMax voltage booster. It increases the voltage to the pump, which increases flow and pressure to supply the injectors. With those two mods, we can support over 850 horsepower with the stock pump, lines, and rails. Hellion places the mass air sensor in the intercooler to give a more consistent signal. The final pipe to go in place will force all that newly turbocharged pressurized air right down the throttle body's throat. And while John and his crew double check everything, we'll take a break. Then it's the finale from the NMRA World Finals. The NMRA World Finals always attracts a loyal crowd of Ford race fans. And they get more bang for their admission buck than just racing. By 
tonight, this test of rubber smoke output in the ever popular burnout contest. They get exhibition runs for five second jet cars. And a massive, mostly Mustang car show. Let's take a look. There's a couple of trick looking red ponies. And there's a guy who likes ducks. And Ford guy, great place to get some good ideas. Then of course, there's the Midway with tons of tempting goodies to help you look and go better. But we better get back to the drag strip. Our featured racers are taking their second shot at that number one qualifier spot. Eurist is leading for now. He runs a 7.37, 400 slower than round one. Now it's Phil Hines' turn. At this time, a much improved 7.24 puts him on top of the heap and one step closer to that championship. We're not really celebrating yet. We're just gonna make sure that, you know, that everything's good. And if I, if I go past the first round, then you'll see a different Phil Hines. That was gonna be it for qualifying. Another round was on the schedule, but not in the cards. All thanks to the second downpour of the day. Then a total rain out on Sunday pushes eliminations to Monday, which was cool, clear, and perfect for an NMRA championship race. Now here's the deal, only the top four Outlaw Street racers have remained for this Monday eliminations. The first race, John Urist against, you guessed it, points leader Phil Hines. Now if Hines wins the race, he wraps up the championship. If Urist wins, he's got to go on and win the event to win the championship, but either way, it's going to be a wild one. Here we go with the most important street outlaw race of the year. Both of these guys want it bad. Uris spins his tires and lifts. Hines heads to a 713 at 195 miles an hour. A new champion. Congratulations. Thank you so much. How's it feel? Unbelievable. Can't even, can't even say it. It's awesome. Well deserved. Sorry, man. It was emotional. I've been working hard, very hard. Paid off. To Hines, it hardly mattered that he smoked his tires and lost the event to Chris Grove. For him, the ultimate victory was already his. Champion of the fastest street Mustangs in the world. Coming up next, we'll fire up the turbocharged Boss 302, strap it to the dyno, and let the boost begin. You know why I've stayed here, right? Supervise. Make sure it's done perfectly. Y you are an excellent supervisor. We're back and getting ready to test fire our newly turbocharged Boss 302. And when the gas begins to pour, you know we're done. John brought Chris Groves, the owner of the Dino Edge, to do what he does best, specialized performance tuning. I uh, will start at zero. And with the TurboSmart boost controller already mounted in the dash and all the parameters set. You ready? I'm ready. It's right. time. Chris? Almost. Uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we want it. Huh? That's what we wanted. Yeah. That's perfect. No exhaust leaks, John? No exhaust leaks. No looks, oil leaks, nothing? Looks great. I think we get it on the dyno. The system is capable of race winning power like some of the cars you saw at the NMRA event. The big question is, how much power can we make? Keep in mind the car still has the factory clutch, transmission, and rear end. Word is Ford made them strong, we'll see. The tires are stock as well, and tire slippage equals less power on the dyno, so we're strapping it a little different than normal. We definitely advise upgrading uh, the tire. <laughs> Chris is loading the tuning file he built for the first pull. He's also setting the boost controller up so the system only creates six pounds to start off with. And of course, we'll up it from there. He's going to make a few short pulls to watch the air fuel ratios and make sure all the settings are correct. 
The blow-off valves are always working. They regulate the pressure to maintain our boost setting. Here's what six pounds of boost made. 625 horsepower. That's 260 more horses than it came in with. Let's up it to 10, and it's this easy. No new tune is required. The mass airflow signal increases with boost and tells the ECM to add fuel and retard timing. 721 horsepower, 629 foot-pounds. It's perfect. 12, 12, 1, all the way across. Absolutely beautiful. Got a nice flat boost curve here, nice and clean. Yep. Chris, what do you want to do from here? I say we turn it up. <laughs> More power. Let's turn it up. And he does. 16 pounds of boost for one more pull. Well, it looks like Chris is on a mission. Here we go again. Front end almost looks like the car is bowing up in the center. You know what I mean? 910. 910. 910 horsepower. 910 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That's crazy how, that's crazy how much power these things will put up with. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. If this is a little too much power, we can turn it down. If you want a little bit more, we can turn it up, and we can program it anywhere in the middle. I mean, that's the beauty of this whole situation. It's the whatever car's gonna live. The car's gonna live, and and uh, and it's gonna be just as streetable at any boost level. That's awesome. The same kit also fits GTs. In fact, Hellion makes twin and single turbo kits for Mustangs 87 and up, plus late model Chevy and Mopar performers. The hardest part of this project was giving them back their Boss 302. Consistent, look at that. If you own a Fox Body or early SN95 Mustang with a five liter in it, here's a great addition to your fuel system if you're planning a power adder. It's Aeromotive's billet aluminum fuel rails that have a 5 8 inch ID through bore and full size ports on both sides of the rail for optimal injector supply. Now they also add an additional inlet and outlet for more plumbing options. Now the red anodized finish not only looks good, but protects the rail against corrosion. The cost, 220 bucks. Is your modular Ford running a bit sluggish? Maybe it's falling off in fuel economy or it gets a misfire every once in a while? That's generally time for some new coil packs. Now that's an easy fix with the Excel's new super coil for the 4.6, 5.4, and the 6.8 liter. Now they have 15% more spark energy than a factory coil pack, which is gonna be good for better throttle response, better fuel economy, and seven to 10 ponies. Now they use just a factory electrical connection that's mounted to a shock and vibration resistant housing. And you can get them in singles at Summit Racing for 50 bucks, or better yet, you can get two free if you order an eight pack for 299. Plus having a matching set under the hood is gonna look better and give you better performance. These are JBA's competition ready headers for 65 through 70 Mustangs that have a 289 or a 302 and a Tremec 5-speed transmission. Now they're constructed out of stainless steel and have a titanium ceramic finish. A 3 8 inch thick flange houses inch and 3 quarter primaries and those dump into a 3 inch collector. Now these headers were designed for maximum ground clearance so they fit on lowered cars. The cost, just under 750 bucks. Well, that's it for Hot Parts. It's time for us to go have a little fun on the streets in that Boss 302. We'll see you next time.